OpenAI may have just solved hallucinations. They just put out a paper which identifies the root cause of hallucinations and a potential way to fix it. And when you hear the reason why models hallucinate, it's gonna be super obvious in retrospect. And this video is brought to you by Notion. More on them later. So here's the paper just released a couple days ago, why language models hallucinate. I'm gonna break down everything you need to know about it. According to the paper, language models are known to produce overconfident, plausible falsehoods, which diminish their utility. So if a model confidently gets something wrong, it is hard to trust that model. And so where in the creation of a new LLM, where in that process, do these hallucinations actually come from? Well, we have to assume in the immense corpus of training data used to train these models, there has to be some inaccuracies, there has to be some mistakes. And here's the thing, even if you had perfect data, meaning not a single thing wrong in the entire data set, which again, isn't even possible, that alone wouldn't be enough to prevent hallucinations. According to the paper, the distribution of language is initially learned from a corpus of training examples, which inevitably contain errors and half truths. However, we show that even if the training data were error-free, the objectives optimized during language model training would lead to errors being generated. So here's the key phrase, the objectives optimized, meaning how the model is being told whether it's getting something right or wrong, or this is a good response versus a bad response, that's where the problem lies. That's where the hallucinations come from. And an interesting thing they point out in this paper is that generating valid responses is actually more difficult than figuring out if it is a valid response or not. Imagine you're given an answer and you're asked, is this valid or not valid? That's usually pretty easy to answer. But now imagine if you're asked to produce the answer yourself, that is much more difficult. That's what they've pointed out in this paper. Because you not only have to produce the right answer, you have to avoid all the potential wrong answers, which could be unlimited, essentially. There are far more wrong answers than there are right answers, and thus, it is much more difficult to produce a right answer than to determine if an answer is right or wrong. And actually, if you think about how you probably use LLMs, that makes a lot of sense intuitively. How many times have you prompted an LLM, gotten an answer back that was clearly not correct, and then you simply said, no, that's not right, fix it, and then the model in return said, oh, you're absolutely right, let me fix it in this other way. That's also why multiple agents working together typically produce better results because an agent reviewing the answer of another agent is much better than just having an agent produce one answer the first time. And so why does this matter? It actually shows that hallucinations are baked into the way models are built today. They're not just bugs, they're features. But does that mean we have to live with hallucinations? Does that mean they're inevitable? No. And you know what's not a hallucination? How awesome the sponsor of today's video is. I'm so excited to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Notion, which I have been using for so many years. And now they have just launched Notion AI for work. It is a suite of AI tools built into your Notion workspace. So first, they have AI meeting notes. Notion will automatically detect that you're in a meeting, start taking notes, of course, with your approval, and then at the end, we'll summarize the notes and send you follow-up items as well. It also has research mode. It's exactly what it sounds like. It is deep research, except now it has access to all of your documents inside of Notion. And you could chat with your favorite models, like the latest OpenAI models and the latest Anthropic models directly from Notion. And the best part, it is unlimited usage when you have Notion AI. So give Notion a try. I personally love it. My team loves it. We use it for everything. So I highly recommend it. So get started with Notion AI. I'm going to drop the link down in the description below. And I'm also going to put it right here on the screen. So thanks again to Notion. Now back to the video. An example of an area of information which models get wrong often, they hallucinate often, is birthdays. If a model sees a person's birthday once in the training set, it's not going to be able to remember it. And so if you ask later, 
hey, what was that person's birthday? It's probably going to guess. Listen to this. If 20% of birthday facts appear exactly once in the pre-training data, then one expects base models to hallucinate on at least 20% of birthday facts. Okay, so then what happens after pre-training? Well, we have post-training. And at that stage, we should be able to catch hallucinations. That's actually where a lot of the industry tries to make the models hallucinate a lot less. The second stage post-training refines the base model often with a goal of reducing hallucinations. But why don't the models just say, I don't know, rather than trying to guess? It turns out it's kind of very similar to what humans do on multiple choice tests. Think about it. If you have a multiple choice test and you don't know the answer, you have a higher likelihood of getting it right by just guessing. Let's say there's four potential answers. You guess one of them. You have a 25% chance of getting the answer right. But if you abstain from answering, if you just say, I don't know, and don't even attempt it, you are guaranteed to get a zero. And that is the crux of why models hallucinate. Here it is in the paper. When uncertain, students may guess on multiple choice exams and even bluff on written exams, submitting plausible answers in which they have little confidence. Yeah. Certainly, it makes no sense to leave a multiple choice question unanswered. In both settings, guessing when unsure maximizes expected score under a binary zero to one scheme that awards one point for a correct answer and none for blanks or I don't knows. And when you bluff, the bluffs are typically very specific. You're trying to give a specific answer rather than giving more hand wavy guesses at an answer. Here's an example. Bluffs are often overconfident and specific, such as September 30th, rather than sometime in autumn for a question about a date. Again, because the evaluation, the feedback mechanism for models rewards no points for guessing rather than trying to give a very confident, specific answer that is wrong. Many language model benchmarks mirror standardized human exams using binary metrics such as accuracy or pass rate. Here's an important part. Humans learn the value of expressing uncertainty outside of school in the school of hard knocks. I don't know why they use that phrase, but fine. Basically, it looks really bad if you confidently give wrong answers often. But if you say, I don't know, or if you try to roughly guess at an answer, you are actually more highly rewarded in the real world. And so let's stop for a second. The ultimate problem, the ultimate reason models hallucinate is because we have no way to tell them good job for saying I don't know and good job for roughly guessing in the right area. We just haven't been doing that to date, but can we? First, an assertion that they use in this paper is that Hallucinations are inevitable only for base models. Many have argued that hallucinations are inevitable. However, a non-hallucinating model could be easily created using a question answer database and a calculator, which answers a fixed set of questions such as, what is the chemical symbol for gold? And well-informed mathematical calculations such as three plus eight, and otherwise outputs I don't know. And this is the key. If it knows the answer, great. If it doesn't, just say you don't know it. And so the very simple solution put forth by this paper is answer only if you are above a certain threshold of confidence, let's say 75%. Only answer if you are greater than 75% confident, otherwise say, I don't know. And yes, you can post train the model to do that. Look at the current evaluations also. GPQA, MMLU Pro, Wildbench, Math, Sweebench, these are all benchmarks that you know if you've watched this channel at all. And look at this, do they have binary grading? Almost all of them do. The only one that doesn't is Wildbench. And did any of them give I don't know credits? Again, the only one that does is Wildbench. So it's kind of a two sides of the same coin problem. During the post training, models are rewarded only for getting the answer right and they're penalized for wrong answers. They are also penalized for saying I don't know. And then on the flip side, when run against the evaluations, the evaluations are doing the same exact thing. The models then understand that the best strategy isn't bluffing, it isn't hallucinating, it is giving the right answer or saying I don't know. They call this in the paper behavioral calibration. Rather than just checking the probabilities of the answers, you're checking the probabilities 
but it's also looking at a certain threshold of confidence. So at 50% confidence, are the answers right half of the time? And at 90%, are they right nine times out of 10? And that's how you test if the model is behaving honestly. All right, so let's look at figure two because this shows what happens with reinforcement learning. It's actually possible for base models to be pretty well calibrated, but then the reinforcement learning pushes them in the wrong direction. Check this out. So on the left side, we have a base model. On the y-axis, we have the accuracy of the model. And on the x-axis, we have the predicted confidence. And when these two things line up along the dotted line, that's a good thing because when it says I'm 70% confident, it should get it right 70% of the time. When it says 30% confident, yes, it should get it right 30% of the time. But then look what happens after reinforcement learning, which is teaching it to bluff. All of a sudden, we have a very different graph. The model might think it's 80% confident, but get it right much fewer, let's say 45% of the time. Reinforcement learning is pushing the model to be more helpful, more decisive, and sometimes more confident than it really should be. And even with reasoning, with search, RAG, all of these tools, which can certainly help hallucinations, the hallucinations are still there. So it really needs to be solved at reinforcement learning time, and we also need to fix the evaluations of the models. All right, so let's break it down. How do we fix this? If you are a benchmark creator, you should be adding confidence thresholds. You should also be rewarding abstaining from answering the question if the model doesn't know. An example, give a plus one for a right answer, a zero for an I don't know, and a negative score for the wrong answer. So you're penalizing the wrong answer, but you're neutral on I don't know. And it turns out GPT-5 is actually starting to do that already. Check this out. This is from a Twitter user, Cole. GPT-5 says, I don't know. Thought for 34 seconds, short answer, I don't know, and I can't reliably find out. Wouldn't you rather see that than a hallucination? Even Elon Musk said, yeah, that's an impressive response. And that is the right response. And it's funny because this isn't the first time we've heard of this. Anthropic put out a paper a few months ago talking about a lot of new ways that they discovered that models work internally. And one of the things that they talked about is why hallucinations happen. They said these models essentially have momentum. They want to give a full and complete answer. They want it to be grammatically correct. They want it to be syntactically correct. They want the spelling to be correct. And once they start responding to a prompt, it's let's say painful for the model to stop responding or to change their response mid response. So they have this momentum. And the anthropic paper talked about the symptom of hallucination, but they didn't actually come to the cause of hallucination like the OpenAI paper did. So it's interesting to see how both of these companies attacked the hallucination problem from both sides. Hallucinations come from pre-training because generating the right response is much harder than checking if it's correct. Post-training keeps the hallucinations alive because benchmarks reward bluffing, not saying I don't know. So the answer, we need to fix how we grade these models. We need to fix how we do reinforcement learning. And once again, thank you to Notion for sponsoring this video. Links for Notion down in the description below. Check them out. I found this fascinating. Hopefully you did too. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.